In Paraguay, it's better to swim during the rainy season because at that time the piranhas keep a low profile. However, they're still there. This man faces danger and hard work every day, so these fish won't stop him from getting his daily exercise, especially considering the ordeal that awaits him. It's not easy because the water is very strong. So that's what I like to do for me, to make physical efforts in the morning. Keeping fit is necessary in this region of Paraguay. The Chaco is perhaps one of the only remaining Wild Wests. This trucker is one of the few people who drives during the rainy season. As such, his courage has earned him a nickname from the locals. The puncture-proof Michelin. At 67, he's still working as much as when he started out. Well, maybe this has something to do with the fact that he doesn't receive any pension. Since the age of 17, he's been transporting goods. He sometimes finds it hard to believe that he's still involved in this job. Life is so dangerous in the Chaco that even changing a tire already means you're taking risks. The Jaguars are never far away. Michelin never goes out without his guardian angel. In any moment, there are animals like this. Generally, I go alone there. So, any other thing to defend yourself. Only for that. It's not easy to work. You have to have a lot of strength and voluntary, because everything is sacrificed. Once again, adventure certainly won't be lacking. Michelin leaves to collect a large load of fertilizer, but the Chaco has a personality of its own. The region is not conquered easily. Living in the Chaco is an everyday struggle. This wild region occupies half of the country, and yet there's only one inhabitant per kilometer squared. More than anything, it's a haven for animals, indigenous tribes, and reckless cowboys. Some fight to prove their strength on the backs of animals weighing over 600 kilograms, monsters who don't allow for any errors. On the Chaco's roads, it's not uncommon to meet other monsters, but this time they're mechanical. Fatal machines which often end up with four wheels in the air. The region's climate is extreme. Depending on the season, the temperature can range from zero to 50 degrees without taking into account the torrential rain. Paraguay is a land of contrasts. Modern cities are hidden behind the jungles, but odd jobs are always available as a way of stemming unemployment. Some traders even offer you a Parisian shopping experience. Yet, some people seek to escape the hustle and bustle and modernity of the city. Among the Mennonites, the clock seems to be stuck in the 18th century. 
They live cut off from the world and they marry only each other. In the indigenous language, Paraguay means to crown, perhaps because since the 16th century the country has become a land of miracles. In the Chaco, the tracks are essentially flat, so when you look at them, they seem easy, almost pleasant. Yet, it is just a facade. For drivers like Michelin, every kilometer is a struggle. It must be said that there are many obstacles. Finally, as he progresses, his old vehicle becomes almost uncontrollable. Usually, it takes Michelin eight hours to travel the 280 kilometers that separates him from Lomo del Plata, where his load of fertilizer is located. But today, it's another story, for the rain has transformed the track into an ice rink. <laughs> He's only gone 10 kilometers. Conmigo nunca fue fácil. Todo 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 el día es una lucha constante. Eh, tengo muchos hijos, tengo que mantenerle a ellos. Seven mouths to feed. This is his motivation to carry on. In the middle of the afternoon, Michelin hits the 15 kilometer mark, struggling. He'd rather give up here because spending the night in the Chaco is much too dangerous. After seven hours of driving, he sets off back to his point of departure. Chaco region is hardly a small paradise. Well, except for the aardvark, a giant anteater or the maned wolf whose slim body allows it to sneak into the thick bushes. In this forest, the temperature goes from zero in winter to 50 degrees in summer. The plants have also had to adapt. Like the bottle tree whose trunk isn't this shape just by chance, it serves as a water tank to fight against drought. Despite this inhospitable climate, peculiar colonies of men and women settle here and, as a result of their actions, the forest is disappearing, giving way to huge fields. These farmers seem as though they were straight out of an episode of Little House on the Prairie.
It's as if time has frozen in the past for these people. Contrary to most Paraguayans, the majority of these people are blonde with blue eyes and they all speak a strange dialect. More precisely, from ancient Germany. We are with the Mennonites, Protestant Christians who originate from Switzerland, Germany and Alsace. Mennonites dedicate their life to God and reject every form of modern society. Their outfits date from the 18th century, as do their family ideals, meaning that they are large, very large, like Jorge's. This is my hijo, Jorge, con 17 años. Juancito, con 5 años. Mi esposa, Elena, con. 16 años, 15 años, Margarita con eh, 13, María con 12, Ana con 9. Una familia grande. Está bien, eso sí, pero cuando crecen todo, además que trabaja. <laughs> and they begin at a very young age. From the age of seven, Jorge replaces games with work, notably in order not to depart from ancestral tradition. Most orthodox Mennonites, like Jorge, do not use any agricultural machinery. Nosotros producimos como 45 litros la mañana y la tarde. Desde chico no más se aprende. Mi mamá. Yo vi cómo hacía ella y le hice yo también. <laughs> group spirit and their faith in Almighty God alleviate the austere way of life. Vamos. La iglesia. Cada domingo. Jorge and his community reject anything that could turn them away from God's work. No tenemos internet, no tenemos también... Television, no tenemos también teléfono, no permite nuestra religión. Vos sabés que hay muchas cosas malas en el internet. ¿Y las malas cosas que serían, por ejemplo? ¿No sabés? <risa> las cosas que no es bueno mirar. Despite appearances, Mennonites keep far away from sects. Their story began in 1536, when, as pacifists, they refused to participate in the wars ravaging Europe. Threatened with persecution, they fled to Canada, Bolivia and Argentina. Paraguay is home to the youngest Mennonite colony, dating to 1927. Today, there are almost 30,000 of them, a simple life where each person wears the same clothes to avoid any external signs of richness. Only the pastor is distinguishable. Church is perhaps their only moment of relaxation. These women are not dressed in purple just for style, it's a sign that they are celibate. Welcoming yet suspicious, they've forbidden us from filming Mass and the pastor's sermon. These men and women have all received the same upbringing and the same world vision imposed by their church. It's difficult for them to think otherwise. All the settlements even have their own school.
classes are taught in their language, a form of ancient German. Henrik also teaches Spanish and maths, all the while linking each lesson back to God. La escuela sirve para creer más a Dios y esa cosa para entender la Biblia y todo como dice y cómo tenemos que andar acá. Nosotros tenemos de siempre así todavía, no sé, de antes no sé, pero ahora no, no manda a nadie. Nosotros sabemos todo como tenemos y andamos nomás. ¿Qué es la diferencia entre una escuela normal y una escuela menonita? ¿Qué es la diferencia? Yo? No, sé la mía. Nunca no fui todavía en la escuela de los paraguayos así. Acá nomás con los menonitas, no sé cómo está. In this village, the boys leave school at 15 and the girls at 12, but times are changing and certain communities now permit children to enroll in higher education, buy cars, televisions and even allow the internet. The Nueva Durango settlement is one of the country's most conservative. However, seeds of change are growing even here. Recently, wooden wheels have been replaced by tires and César is not pleased. Pero ya somos poco lo que reservamos esa tradición. Ya mucho cambiaron a rueda de goma y el automóvil y todo. Pero nosotros somos una de las colonias que todavía tenemos la tradición de, de ir en carrito de caballo. ¿Y por qué eso? Es la tradición. El que no quiera, pues tiene libertad para, para salir. No es que está atado acá. Mennonites are opening themselves up to the world little by little, even if they continue to only marry each other. Paraguayans have accepted these communities. Often in the Chaco, it's better to be united. Extreme weather doesn't spare anyone. Michelin, the driver who abandoned his lorry on the track when he could no longer progress, is preparing himself a hearty breakfast before returning to face the treacherous road. Oh, bien gordo, eh? Aquí en Paraguay se come mucho asado, eh? Es una tradición. Al menos en Paraguay no está bien barato todavía. La gente más pobre igual no más come acá mucho asado. Meat is cheaper than vegetables here. Michelin lives with his wife, two daughters, their husbands and their children. That's seven children in the house in total. <laughs> Maria, his wife, would like her husband to change job. <laughs> Solamente a Michelin se le llama cuando llueve, porque él es el único que es loco y avanza, avanza el Chaco. Entonces ya empiezan a llamarle a él para ir a trabajar. Se va, es un loco, se va. But Michelin cannot afford to refuse. He must continue whatever the challenges may be. The previous day, because of the mud, he had to abandon his lorry on the edge of the road. This time, he's retrying his luck with his neighbors. Equipped with a four by four, they're going to escort him to the town to pick up his load of grain. Tener problemas porque el vehículo 4x2 eh, no está pushando los cuatro ruedas. El vehículo, eso ya es muy caro, no está, no está en mi capacidad para tener. Entonces me viro como, como se pueda, ¿entendés? Es una sobrevivencia para mí.
failing a second time is out of the question, so Michelin fits chains onto the lorry's tyres. The chains and the help of his neighbours 4x4, far from guarantee that the journey to the town, which is still 260 kilometres away, will be successful. And Gustavo is well aware of that. After a few kilometers, Michelin's handmade chains finally give up. Acá, la verdad que no es tiró en la cuneta y no hecho. Entonces acá es es muy difícil con mucho trabajo te vamos a salir. Solamente que un lado ya está está en el agua mismo en la cuneta mismo, entonces es muy difícil ahí. Ahora comenzó. That's an understatement. Even with a four-wheel drive, the road remains as slippery as an ice rink. It's too late. Both cars are stuck 200 kilometers from Lomo del Plata. Ahora también él cayó ahí en la cuneta. Casi 50 50 centimetros. Six hours of driving to make 60 kilometers. It seems that fate is not on Michelin's side. Even his neighbor's powerful 4x4 is stuck. The driver's going to have to use the shovel again. The Chaco's inhabitants can be surprising. No one gives up, no matter what is thrown at them. Like this driver, for example. He certainly doesn't lack imagination. His truck is a mechanical wonder. And yes, Ruben has made it himself. 
completely by hand. He has nicknamed it Tumba Bus, which means lorry bus. Those who live in the region often see funny vehicles. Rubens catches a lot of attention, and even though the law doesn't really apply in the Chaco, he still avoids going through cities when he can. For Ruben, making this lorry was a question of survival. He's a blacksmith and his salary is capped at 10 pounds per day. Now he also makes deliveries and even though his vehicle is made out of odd materials, he complains when the carts are much slower than his own. It took him six months to assemble the spare parts of a lorry and a bus with his brother, but it was ten times cheaper than buying a used one. Totalmente original. Radiador original. Depurador original. Bomba original. Este tiene la marca sigue igual. No 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 se ha tocado nada. Estos son originales. Todo lo que hay acá son original. Menos esto. Menos la carrocería. Entonces cortamos y fabriqué esto. Freno. A veces no va bien y a veces bien. Ruben has landed a cargo of sand to deliver. However, nothing is going to go to plan. Una carga 170 tonel. Entonces después hay gasoil, después más o menos deja 60 mil de ganancia por viaje. Está un poco duro la la arena. So Ruben reveals that he's a bit of a thug. He steals the sand, but the owner, who's tired of seeing this hole grow, has been secretly monitoring his land and leaves his hiding place. For every clever person, there will always be someone more clever. Ruben will have to find another stone pit, but that's nothing compared to Michelin and his friend's trouble. The 4x4 and the truck are still stuck in the mud. El tema no es esa huella, la huella del lado izquierdo de mi rueda al lado del chofer es el problema. Esa no va a montar. Si no llega a montar, continuamos más recto. Este no podemos descuidar tanto ahí ahí para eh, esa rueda porque le está estirando allá, allá es mucho más bajo. No, metele no. Estamos en el Chaco. No hay perdón acá. Metele no. No tenemos que enojarnos. Está ahí usted. De pochilla. Estamos haciendo un lindo trabajo. Y todo depende de nuestro chofer ya acá. 
Es ahora o nunca, así mismo, es ahora o nunca. Y Dios quiera que funcione. Yo creo que ahí va a salir. Si es que no, sube ya ahí. Quédate nomás ahí donde tu papá está. Bueno, ¿está? Estamos. Vale. Me doy la derecha. Con mucha adrenalina para tratar de salir. Tenemos que tomar la mayor velocidad posible. Two hours work for nothing. Now they will need to rely on a bigger machine to get them out, a tractor perhaps. But they don't work in the Chaco's forest. With a population of one person per kilometer squared, it's very hard to come by them, especially since the phone network is, let's say, almost non-existent. There are a lot of farmers in the area, however, and the farms are huge. Some are over 200 kilometers squared, and the cowboys who roam them rarely use the roads with their animals. We're at one of the country's largest ranches. Around 40 cowboys watch over an enormous herd of 11,000 cows. Eleven thousand animals to be cared for every day. In the Chaco's rainy season, parasites swarm, and the cows are the first victims. Like this one with infected ears, it's a tough life. However, Pedro wouldn't change a thing. Nosotros día a día tenemos que eh, estar trabajando acá. Ese es lo, el compromiso que tenemos. Quiero ya estoy trabajando 18 años. Ahora tengo 30 y 33. Yo solo estoy acá. No voy a recién tengo. Llegamos a un acuerdo. Por lo menos yo estoy trabajando acá y me gusta estar acá, ¿verdad? Sí. Mi, mi trabajo es estar con, con el ganado, el que yo quiero hacer, ¿verdad? Si sí, ahí me, mi novia quiere, me pregunta si para que yo me vaya, ¿verdad? Ya, a quedarme, pero por lo menos no. Yo solamente hago este trabajo. The cowboys are spread over four farms. It's not incredibly comfortable, but their boss lives by one rule. A cowboy who eats well is a happy cowboy. So we put a cook on every farm. But don't go looking for simple stews. Rosita makes robust, energizing food. Carne todos los días. Porque con carne le alcanza más todo a los muchachos. Y sí o sí tiene que ser carne. A ellos les encanta la carne. So there's boiled meat for breakfast, meat in sauce for lunch, and deep fried meat with yucca, a potato like vegetable, for dinner. It's not a very balanced diet, but they need protein to spend eight hours on a horse. <laughs> Emmanuel leads a dozen cowboys, and as the boss, he has two privileges. One is that he receives 600 pounds, which is 200 more than his men, and the other is that he gets a small house for himself where he can live alone. A veces 20. Y me hace falta, pero eh, están estudiando también por las criaturas. Sí, acostumbrado. De chicos estuve así trabajando. Con los compañeros acá hacemos compañía. ¿verdad?
ahora por lo menos no tenemos mucho trabajo porque teniendo hijos lo, las vacas hay terneros chicos Around a thousand baby calves will be born in the coming weeks. The men live together on this huge farm for many months without ever seeing other people. But soon all of the Chaco cowboys will meet for a contest. On the road, Michelin and Roberto are still trying to find signal. So that they can find a farmer who could get them out of this mess. Gustavo resigns himself to digging when... Jorge! Uh, Michelin! Ultimately, in the Chaco, time does not run at the same speed as the rest of the world. The tractor has taken two hours to get to them. Rescue. Nearly. Michelin's truck is completely stuck. There's one method left to try, making a little train. The 4x4 pulls the tractor, which pulls the truck. The saying is the same all over the world. You can't get blood out of a stone. Michelin is still 100 kilometers away from Lomo del Plata. He abandons the effort for the second time. Michelin will wait for the end of the rainy season, in two months, to travel to town. In the Chaco, it's better to use a good horse to get around. The cowboys don't have any issues getting to their annual competition. Families finally get to meet up for a weekend to admire their fathers and husbands who are preparing to prove their honor in the arena. They compete for the title of the best vaquero, that is, the best cowboy in the area. Firstly, there is a team showdown. The men have to put cows on the ground, but it's far from over. <laughs> they must also show off their lassoing ability, like a real-life Buffalo Bill. And the main event, taking place at night, the 
rodeo requires real preparation from the cowboys. They take on bulls, or rather, mountains of muscle which exceed 800 kilograms. The aim is to spend at least eight seconds on the beast's back. Juan is representing his father's farm. His fiancée is not best pleased, and she's got good reason for it, as Juan is a novice. Calentamiento, un poco, para no tener un, una lesión después o de, eh, dolor de músculos. El cuerpo que sea un poco más ágil. Primera vez en hoy. Estoy un poco nervioso, eh, ansioso. Vamos, vamos a ver cómo es. Una prueba, superar miedos. Christian doesn't know fear. He's a banker, but his family owns a ranch. He's already won the competition several times. He perfectly recreates the movements. Last year, Christian was taken by surprise. A bull jumped in the air and Christian broke his leg, but that wasn't all. Estuve lesionado por unos cuantos meses y ahora estoy volviendo otra vez. Sí. Así no más el deporte. Huesos rotos, ligamentos destrozados. La la vida de un de un deporte extremo. Es muy peligroso. Nosotros nunca sabemos si vamos a volver con vida de él. Pero somos unos nos aficionados a la adrenalina y trabajamos duro para poder hacer esto lo que estamos haciendo. Es una resina de abeja, es un pegamento para que no resbale la mano el, esto, para que esto no resbale la mano. Atención en la compuerta 13 se va a abrir enseguida y enseguida entra Cristian Alderete. Since his latest accident, Christian no longer takes any risks. He protects his vital organs with a helmet and a reinforced jacket. Wearing this protection was sensible as the rider is thrown off after five seconds. Their posture must be different to how it is on horseback. The cowboys stretch themselves to reduce the kicks. Now it's Juan's turn. It's the first time he's taken part in a competition, but he wants to do it in style without a helmet. Is this beginner's luck or a much calmer bull? Juan has managed the eight seconds. Así que pensé, pensaba que iba a hacer más fuerza el, el toro, pero no, no saltó tanto como lo otro. Acá los muchachos sufrieron más que yo. Da gusto, pero para hoy es suficiente. In contrast to last year, there have been no injuries this weekend.
here are some karma cows, at least in appearance. For the time being, they're moving slowly, but when going downhill, it can be quite scary. Carried by the weight of the carts, the animals speed up and at that point, you need to know how to use the reins and have a few extra hands to control them. Two weeks before Christmas, hundreds of teams head towards the car coupe basilica. Geraldo has been doing this pilgrimage since his childhood. Three hundred thousand believers come to pray for Our Lady of Miracles. The history dates back to the 16th century where an indigenous Paraguayan who had converted to Catholicism sculpted a statue of the Virgin to thank her for having saved him from a massacre. Since this day, Paraguayans attribute numerous miracles to this statue. Geraldo has never seen a miracle, but he firmly believes in it. Ruega por nosotros, pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. Each person is waiting for a sign a healing, a divine intervention, but all Paraguayans know that the true miracles are what they achieve every day in order to move forwards.